In this video, we're gonna learn about static strings in Swift. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below, open up Xcode if you're excited, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Let's create a playground and learn about static strings. So first things first, I will create this playground and center our window here. We'll be oh so creative and call this static strings explained and I'll toss it onto my desktop. So what on earth is a static string? Well, you may have seen it already if you've been around the block uh, a little while. So here actually we have a string, which is a mutable variable. It's a var, it's not a constant, it's a string, right? Its data type is a string. Cool, so we can have a constant version of this, which is also a string, right? And let's just change uh, the name here so it doesn't conflict. Now there's actually a third type of string that you might not be familiar with. And that is a static string. So let's say let foo, it is going to be a static string. Let's try that one more time, static string. And it's going to be equal to foo. Now what's the difference between this thing and this thing? Well, it can't just be a constant versus a mutable type, right? Because we have that up here. The difference is actually a compiler level optimization. And you might know that if you reference certain things in Swift, this is actually what it's using behind the scenes, right? So if we say that my file is pound file, right? If we go and look at this, and let's see if I can click into this to exemplify this. I guess I can't, but this references the current file that we're in. And this is commonly used in uh, a variety of ways, right? If you're ever tracking crashes, if you're tracking where a certain resource file exists, be it an audio file, be it a plist, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? A static string is used under the hood. Well, why would you use it? A static string is built in a way where instead of the compiler storing a pointer, a reference to the string and building out the entire data structure, a static string enables your application to know at compile time that this thing will never change and that instead of storing the entire string data structure with all the various uh, factors and APIs around it, what it can store is just a pointer directly to the memory in the binary where the string exists. And the benefit of doing that is A, it's less memory, B, it's more performant, and C, I think most important of all is it helps the user understand, but user here being developer, understand that this thing is truly not meant to change. So let's take a practical example, because sometimes when you learn about this stuff, it seems a little trivial, and then you take an example and it's much easier to understand. So what I've done previously is I've used static string to create a uh, failable, a non-failable initializer with a URL. So here we can create an initializer, which takes in a static string. And this static string here is a static string like so. Now, obviously, if you pass in just like ABC, your, your URL is not valid. But the intention of making this a non-fillable initializer is that because we are going to be calling this ourselves, instead of having to unwrap a URL being constructed every single time, which is kind of annoying, I can just go about doing this. So I can say self.init, and of course we know that there is a uh, initializer which just takes in the string like so, and I can pass in our static string like that. Now, of course, this initializer here is going to be fillable, so it says can't convert a static string to expected type. So that is of course true because static string is not the same thing as a string. And here we will force unwrap it like so and hopefully see this error go away. So cool, so let's actually use this. So here I'll be able to say let URL. And if I did it the traditional way, let's just do a simple example. Let's say we have iosacademy.io slash plus. And if we want to print out url.absolute string, we know that the URL here is optional. Conversely, if I take this and I copy and paste it, let me get rid of this guy, and now we know it is going to give us a string, we don't need this to be optional anymore because as the developer on this, we know that we're passing in a static string. And the last thing I'll call out is, from a optics and creating a string perspective, there is no difference in how a string looks, whether it's static or whether it is a typical string data type. 
Uh, and the actual last, last thing I'll mention is don't confuse static strings to the following, which I've seen some people do sometimes, so I'll call it out. So you can have a statically held string, which is a string, and this is going to be, let's call this a constant. So this is static referring to how this is held, a static type or an instance member. There is a data structure, which is a static uh, string itself, and then there is a string data structure as well. So let's see why this is yelling at me. So let's see, static, var. Anyways, so that, that exemplifies my point. This is yelling at me because I have something screwed up here. So it says this needs to be on a type, which makes sense. Basically, it wants me to put this on a value type or a class, but I digress. The difference between a static string data type, a string, a static pointer, an instance member pointer, a mutable object, and a constant object. So short video, but lots covered. Let me know if you've used this before, if you find it useful, if you have found issues with it. Uh, I think this is a pretty useful extension. You just have to be careful that you don't do an uh-oh and uh, you know pass in something crazy in here like ABC, for example, which obviously would cause your application to crash, might be useful to do a uh, runtime assert here. But anyways, that is all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Comment for the YouTube algorithm if you enjoyed the video. Comment if you didn't enjoy the video and let me know what you wanna see and what you didn't like. Uh, subscribe, we're on our way to 90,000 subs, trying to be more consistent with these videos. Uh, recently, I had a family member have surgery, hence I've been MIA for a few days. So I will be getting back to the video cadence shortly. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next one.